Hi and welcome to WIT, episode one, where we'll study some parsing, parsing, and of course TDD, which is the main thing with this episode. So I've already started uh, creating a project with Git. So if we list what's in here, this <clears throat> there's this readme. If we look at the readme, you can see that it has some things in it where it describes the assignment and stuff like that. And now I just want to show you here and there's a license and everything. So you can use this. Um, and we start by creating our main file. And the first thing we'll do in this file is to create our lecture. So uh, I'll define I'll define uh, the lexer, and I know we'll take a string. So I start there, and then I start with the doc string, and the doc string set the um, doc test wants me to write it as if it was a Python prompt. So I start with lexer. And I gave it a one, and it would produce a one, and then ending, and then pass. So this function is doing nothing. And then I'm going to say to Python, run uh, doc test on this file. And it says, the test failed. It said that it was expecting one, but got not got nothing. So that's cool. So then we do the lazy fix. See that the test passes, and then I go to git and and git commit with message. Good. So next test is to add something else. Let's say two. That would be two. And we do doc test. It says fail. Expected two, but got one. So then we'll try and do int string. And uh, we're on the test. And uh, I'll do commit all message. I think I use that message like for every commit after this one. Not so good, maybe, but we want this to go quick. So next thing uh, is that I actually have done this wrong. We want a list of things. So if I do like that, this will fail. Oh crap. <sighs> Sorry. Yeah. They failed. <laughs> Good. We'll do that. I'm sometimes stupid, but that's nothing new. So, they pass. Good. Now, I'll go back later and remove that commit. No. Um, so keep adding text tests like sir let's say that we are good at fixing the single um, single value <laughs> expression so we do some more 
this would result in one plus two. And this will fail. Invalid real int. Yeah. So it failed in an exception. That's not so good. So first I'll try to do for each uh, token in string dot split. Split defaults to um, white spaces. And we'll do token if token is digit. I think as the else token. And this became quite long, so I'll split lines. If you don't know what this thing is with the hard parentheses, it's um, a list comprehension, quite useful at times when you just want to generate a list from another list or stream or whatever. So say if they pass, they passed, because that was an old, I remove that, and run again to see that. So we write, which I must have done here, yeah. No, 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 no. And I'll save. So I think that actually handles everything now in Lexer, uh, except um, if, if we have uh, floats. So I'll add some floats. I'll add them after this one because I think it's actually um, And we see that they fail. Yes, it was expecting so. Hmm, so I didn't thought that, that was a digit. Interesting. Yeah. Dot in token. This becomes quite ugly, but we'll do a ref factor soon. Um, that's working. And it passes. So they pass.
So now we did some refactoring. We didn't alter the behavior of the program, but we altered the implementation. And this is important to check that we haven't broken anything. We haven't, so we can save that. We'll test passes. So now we're ready to go ahead and start to create the uh, as builder, is t builder. Def is t builder. And we have tokens as input. So the first example is AST builder and we give them one to return one. It's failure because we got nothing. Turn one. It passes. Um, and then we do the same thing, but with two. Oh, sorry, did run the test first. You can see that it fails. So we return the first token. Sorry, it's zero indexed. Okay, so works, commits, and then we do some complicated, more complicated. We do one plus two and it should return the tuple of one plus two and actually it should be like that and it should get you as one <laughs> Need to go through and remove those. <laughs> yeah, failed. And um, so we going to fix this. So one way to do this is to say, okay, I want to have up to but not with three. So that will be three items, and I will create a tuple. If then of tokens greater than one, else return token. I did the same error. Wow. So I can do the thing here. Good. Now we'll do some more complicated, complicated stuff. We'll do times three, and then we want the three, and we want the times to be first. So we create a node here. So we have times we have three. One, two, three. Nice. And this will not work. Because it got just the first one. So we can do is equal to three.
then as f then tokens equals to one. So we'll see that it's only not in the case. And, and then else. Return Yes, I first and then we add, add list from and then we do a recursive call. The recursive call is just when you call yourself or the same function to do a subset of work. So tokens from to and forward. And it works, so we can say that. Uh, and we want to have the opposite, so that we know if this is uh, times and this is a plus. Uh, no, no, question mark. Even though that's then this should be times, right? But it should also be lower down. So now this should fail. Otherwise, we have already uh, working now because it did the wrong way. So then we need to check if tokens one in plus or minus. Then we can do this way because then it was when it worked. else return um, and yes uh, the thing here is that uh, in this part uh, we're in the plus statement or whatever uh, we have the plus operator and now we have the um, times operator and in the first part we're being the root node but in this part we're actually being the uh, child node of the expression and so we need to put uh, the three here back because it's the three tokens we want but uh, we want to be part of the tree as the child of uh, this one. So what we're going to do is that we're going to put us in a node and say that uh, we're uh, part of the token stream. From three words, and we're going to put ourselves as an argument to ask builder. Is that correctly spelled? Yeah. Okay. So fingers crossed because this one is the hardest part of this program, and it fails. Okay. Yeah. See why. Works. Okay. And if you don't understand anything of what I'm writing here, I I have understanding for that because this parsing stuff and my way of typing isn't always easy to follow. But I hope you understand this part, which is the most important part, where you try to give in 
input, which is as close to what it could get, and try to match the output. And that's how you could test things. So now we know that AST Builder works and the Lexer works. And we could try to add more tests here, but I'm quite confident that the other test will also pass. Uh, and yes, we have no error checking for the input to validate that it's parsable. We will just be crashing if we get something wrong. But this is this is a tutorial of, of yes, writing the simplest tests not to uh, validate input. Anyway, continue. Uh, so def evaluate. That's maybe wrong to spell, I don't know. ST. And we start by. Did I save? No, I didn't. Um, so, eval. For it, just one or turn one. Got nothing, right? Turn one. And then we do one more. Go two. That forces us. Sometimes it feels like you're two persons. One that wants to fail the test, wants to build a test that fails, and one who wants to correct them. So we try to just return the AST. Um, it works. And just pass. Two, three, and then we see that we don't pass. And if then Okay, so now we can handle one single plus node. Let's do it a little bit more complicated. Uh, we could have six. Okay. 
Okay, so now it crashes because it's trying to add an int to a tuple and it can't do that. And that's because we need to error this now too. We fail because we have the same problem here. Now to the all the operators because we only have a plus and we need to have a minus. I realize I've got to run because it did fail. But sometimes even I suck. Let's try this. Um, Okay, now I'll run it to see if it fails. Good. Got nothing. Getting really tired. Let's see if we can make this a little bit better. See if it still runs. If it does, then our refactoring is complete. 
and we can say that now it's only the main program left. Hmm. Quite good. So Okay, to go through go through the code, um, main here uh, takes a list of arguments, which is the arguments after the program name, uh, and it joins them with a space, and it gives them to the lexer. The lexer returns tokens. The ask builder takes the tokens, creates an AST, and the evaluator evaluates the AST, and we print it out. The main if statement which is common in Python, um, so that you know that things only run if you're not the, it, that only runs if you're the main module. Um, you import sys because there's where the arguments are. You get the sys arguments and let it be behind the first arguments because that's the name of the script. And you give it to me. So I'll try to run this uh, script and I'll give it one plus three times one and a half. No, one divided by four plus seven. Some of this fast enough to that would be eight. Right, am I that bad at counting? <laughs> it did right, but I did wrong. Uh, so, we do want this instead. So, this would be nine. Yeah. Good, it works. I mean, it's not that good at math, obviously. So, I uh, hope this was useful. I know it was long and that I did have a break, uh, but hopefully, it at least showed why you should use TDD and some things about refactoring and other stuff. So hope I see you soon um, and leave comments because I need them. Thank you. Bye.